Hey, this is Presh Tullwalker. I came across an interesting paper. When masters of abstraction run into a concrete wall, experts failing arithmetic word problems. The abstract asks, can knowledge about apples, cars, or Smurfs hinder our ability to solve mathematical problems involving these entities? They actually found experts were failing at certain word problems. Are you going to run into the same issue? To find out, let's do a simple two-question quiz. Question one. Slouchy Smurf is a certain height. He climbs on a Smurf table. He now attains the height of 14 centimeters. Grouchy Smurf climbs on the same table as Slouchy Smurf. Grouchy Smurf is two centimeters shorter than Slouchy Smurf. What height does Grouchy Smurf attain when he climbs on the table? Given the data provided, is it possible to find a solution? A. No, there is not enough information to find the solution. B. Yes, and the correct answer is blank. You need to figure out the correct answer. Now question two. In the store, Anthony wants to buy a ruler costing a certain price. He also wants a notebook. In total, that will cost him $14. Julie wants to buy the same notebook as Anthony and an eraser. The eraser costs $2 less than the ruler. How much will Julie have to pay? Given the data provided, is it possible to find a solution? A. No, there is not enough information to find the solution. B. Yes, and the correct answer is blank. Fill in the correct answer. So let's go over the answers to these questions. So question one. Slouchy Smurf is a certain height. He climbs on a Smurf table. He now attains a height of 14 centimeters. So we have a table. We'll represent Slouchy Smurf by a mushroom. And he's on top of the table. And the total height is 14 centimeters. Grouchy Smurf climbs on the same table as Slouchy Smurf and he is two centimeters shorter. So we subtract two centimeters. What height does Grouchy Smurf attain? Well, this will be 14 minus two, which is of course equal to 12 centimeters. So the correct answer is yes, there is enough information and the correct answer is 12 centimeters. Now question two. In the store, Anthony wants to buy a ruler costing a certain price. He also wants a notebook in total that will cost him $14. So if R is the price of the ruler, N is the price of the notebook, we have R plus N is equal to $14. Julie wants to buy the same notebook as Anthony and an eraser. So we can denote this as N plus E. The eraser costs $2 less than the ruler, so E is equal to R minus two. How much will Julie have to pay? Well, we will substitute in for E, so we have N plus R minus two, but then n plus r is equal to r plus n, which is equal to 14. So this is equal to 14 minus 2, which is equal to 12. So Julie will have to pay $12. So the correct answer is B, and the correct answer is $12. How did you do? Did you find one question was easier than the other? Now, both of these questions are testing the same arithmetic problem of 14 minus 2, which is equal to 12. The two questions are isomorphic to each other. However, the participants did not find the two questions to be the same. Question two was asking about price and question one was asking about height. Height is a kind of number that we imagine on an axis or a number line, which is an ordered number. We think about distance, duration, and floors as types of ordinal numbers. On the other hand, Price is a type of number we think more about as a collection of a set. So we think about collections, price, weight. These have a size, but they're not in any particular order. And we call these cardinal numbers. So what the authors of the study found is there was a difference in how the participants responded for the two types of numbers. For the questions that involved ordinal numbers, the adults were able to solve 82% of the questions correctly. For the cardinal numbers, however, they only solved 47% of the questions correctly. 
they found these to be much harder and they took longer to solve them. Now, interestingly, they also tested mathematical experts. These were people who passed the École Normale Superior Entrance Exam, which is an extremely difficult entrance exam that only 2% of people pass successfully. So how did the experts do? You would imagine these are trivial questions for them. Well, for the ordinal number questions, the experts solved this with a 95% rate. Minus a few slip-ups, they pretty much solve ordinal number questions. But for cardinal number questions, only 76% gave the correct answer. Now, this is an amazing thing. It's much smaller, and even more, is that one in four experts struggled if the phrasing involved cardinal quantities. This is absolutely mind-boggling. So I think there are three lessons you can take from this study. First, word choice of a question is very important. Second, beware of this bias. Even if you can solve complicated arithmetic and mathematical problems, you might trip up on an easy question just because of the word choice. Finally, don't blindly trust experts. While they are experts and they can figure out the solution if they understand the question, things like word choice and semantics can matter to whether they actually understand the question. So it's okay if you question them and you should beware of this bias. What an interesting study. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.